So in the last class, we were able to complete a class on feature selection, but I told you that I'm going to be taking dimensionality reduction in this class. That is principal component analysis, which is an aspect of dimensionality reduction. The reason is because dimensionality reduction is such a broad topic that we cannot cover it in this tutorial series. So even principal component analysis is also so wide and so uh, technically uh, involved so that, so that we cannot also cover it in a very short class. But I figured out a way to simplify it and also I provided all the materials you need to do it as well. So let's quickly do principal component analysis. I'm going to create a new class, a, a new file now. I'm going to say file new notebook. Again, if you are joining for the first time, please check all the previous series because this series is actually uh, continuous from the previous uh, class. So it's a series that you have to start from the beginning unless you're actually very good in data science. So I'm going to call it class 5A and it's going to be PCA. And now I would like us to use the Iris data site to perform this PCA. So I'm going to import the necessary models. We are going to be needing pandas. Pandas are speedy. Again, the steps you want to follow, they are here. But what I have on my website is actually more detailed. It's going to take a bit of time to that. I want to leave for you as an exercise. But in this series of data science class for beginners, I'm going to just perform basic PCA on the Iris data site and, and help you see exactly how it works. So I'm going to import numpy, um, numpy as np and also I'm going to import the model that we're going to be using for uh, PCA is available in the sklearn.decomposition uh, sklearn uh, import import sklearn.com uh, import PCA. I'm mixing things up. So it's going to be from sklearn.decomposition import PCA. This is a practical class. So what I expect you to do is simply to get working. Open your system, open Jupyter Notebook and start following along as I do it. So don't just stay and watch this video. Actually start doing it. Pause the video, set up and follow along. In that way it becomes clearer to you. So I'm also going to import uh, from sklearn, sklearn.preprocessing, I'm going to import, um, import from sklearn, import preprocessing. So we are going to be plotting, so I'm going to import matplotlib, matplotlib.py plus as uh, plt, if I'm going to run this. Okay, perfect. I think it should work. Now, once we import our data set, so I think I'm, I have to uh, just paste the parts to the data set. We are going to be using the Irish data set and I'm going to run just to make sure everything is okay. I'm going to put this in a data frame. I'm going to say Iris data frame is going to be pd3 underscore csv. I'm going to specify the parts. It's fine. I'm going to just check that it's right correctly. I'm going to say Iris underscore df. All right, so we have our data frame right here. Now I want to perform principal component analysis to determine the principal component of this data set. So what we have is four dimensional data here, of course, maybe five, but the last column is the classes. We're talking about four attributes. You can't plot a graph in four dimensions. So of course, human eye cannot actually visualize four dimensions. So I want to kind of reduce the dimension of this data set into the principal components and then we are going to select uh, the, uh, the principal component that affects the data more than others. <laughs> so it's called the, the component that affects, the contribute most to the variance uh, in data set. All right, so, um, so let me separate this data into X and Y. So I'm going to say iris <coughs> X is equal to iris uh, df, iris df, you already know that we can use iloc to select, so you want to specify iloc, you put your comma, on this side of the comma I want to select the rows, so we want to select from row 0 to the end, and now we want to select the columns from column, uh, let's see, yeah, so we have 
the x should be from column 0, 0, 1, 2, 3, right? 0, 1, 2, 3. Yeah, because they are false. So it's going to be column 0, 2, 4. 4 is not included. So the last um, index in, in Python is always not included. So just to verify, I'm going to just say I reset just to check to make sure it works. So you can see the last index is not included. So I'm going to now separate iris y, iris df dot i lock. And this time we are taking all the rows from row zero to the end. So start by putting a comma when you are using i lock. So I'm going to put a comma. So the rows are going to be from zero to the end. And the column is going to be from column uh, four, column four to the end, right like this. So if I check it now, by saying, uh, sorry, guess. if I check it now by saying iris y, we can see that we have it correctly there. Okay, so let me take it out, get out. Okay, perfect. So we now want to perform principal compliant analysis, and how do we do it? We need to import one more module called the standard scalar. Do we really need the standard scalar? I don't think so. Okay, so. Um, we are going to create a PCA object. I'm going to call it PCA is equal to PCA. And components, specify the number of components you want to use. So let's use four. Of course, you can use a lower set of components. I'm going to explain to you later on why we are using four, which is exactly the same number of attributes we have. So it's like an argument. Nothing has changed. It's the same number of attributes. So what have we reduced? We are going to solve, we're going to answer this question uh, in a second. So, um, so I'm going to say P, uh, so just a second. The component, I'm going to call it principal component, is going to be PCA. PCA, let me just increase the fonts a little bit. Let me see if I can. Perfect. So it's going to be PCA.fits underscore transform. I'm going to specify iris x the values because we are oh, the components is based on the on the attributes which we call iris x. And the values we are putting there means we want to we'll give the strand form uh, function an array instead of a data frame. All right. So what have we done? We now have performed PCA. Now, if you perform PCA, you can actually look at something called percentage variance explained or percentage of uh, percentage variance explained by each component so this principal components now have scores or have percentage variance explained which actually tells you how important they are they are arranged in the decreasing order meaning the first principal component is the most important one the second one followed by the second one so as you are moving from left to right, you can actually select the most important component. Once you get to some point, you want to stop. So it doesn't mean you have to select all the components. You just want to select the principal ones. And so let's now view this percentage variance explained uh, graphically. All right, first, maybe you want to just check what is in PCS. So let's check what is in PCS. So you can, you can see this array here uh, of all the actually the same data sets, <laughs> the same dimension of data sets, but this does not make sense. So let's take out this. So I'm going to create a data frame with this principal component, and then we are going to actually visualize the principal component in terms of percentage variance explained, which one has the highest percentage variance explained, followed by the next one and followed by the next one. Of course, there are four of them. We want to know which ones are more important. So I'm going to create a, a data frame. I'm going to call it PCA data frame. I already told you how to create a data frame in class one, so I'm not going to explain it here. So I'm going to say PCA DF is equal to PD dot data frame dot data frame, and I'm going to specify our data is going to be PCS and the columns. I think columns. Um, it's going to be, so, yeah, so I want to now give this columns and then PC1, PC2, PC3, PC4, because there are four components here 
uh, we are using. So component is not the same as the attribute. It is just a, a value or values that explain how this attribute affects your data. So I'm going to say PC1 as in for the first one and I'm going to say PC2 for the next one and PC3 for the third one and I'm going to just reduce or move this one this way and PC4 for the, for the last one. I'm going to just hit this key uh, columns is equal to here's going to be this way. So if I look at the data frame numbers by saying PCA DF, can see we have the principal component now is what we have. What does this mean? So we want to now check. Uh, we want to know which of these components are actually more important among these four components. Um, yeah, so the theory of principal component analysis is explained clearly in my website. It's much involving because it has to do with mathematical concept of, of uh, eigen values and eigen vectors. Because principal component, technically speaking, is defined as the eigen decomposition of the covariance matrix. So imagine you have to get a covariance matrix, decompose it to get eigen values and eigen vectors, and then uh, generate another matrix made up of the scores and the and the the, the, the I think the loadings of these um, eigen um, values. So yeah, so this is not what this class is all about. Alright, so let's kind of uh, do it. Um, so I'm going to say PCA dot explained. So let's just see what weights Okay, what weights are assigned to this component? So this, they are called percent explained, explained variance ratio. All right, so we have the first one have explained 92% of the data site. The second one explains 0.05. So if you have 92% of your data set already explained, well, you might actually it may be okay because if a model performs 92%, it's, it's fine, it's fine. Then we have the other one that's playing uh, 0.05, which is 5%, so you're already close to 100, 0 0.01 at 98, and then of course 0 0.005, maybe you can just leave it out. So in this case, you have several uh, components, you can actually uh, select a few. Maybe when you get there yeah, are 100 components, when you get a 10th component, you may have explained 99% of your data. You may now choose to leave out the other ones. So in that case, you reduce the dimension of your data from very high dimension to very few uh, components. All right, I like to do a visualization. So I'm going to do PCA, uh, I'm going to say plot. I'm going to do a plot, PLP the plot. And um, um, X. So x is going to be uh, for four values for the x for each of the bars. So I'm going to say x is equal to range 1 to 5, which is 1 to 4. And the height of the bar, height is equal to pca.explained variance ratio. I think this should be fine. Uh, explained variance ratio underscore. Okay, so it's going to be 0 to 5. So give us 4, it's going to be 0 to 5, and this is fine. All right, so you can see what we are talking about here. Um, you can actually just multiply this by 100 so that we can just see it in percentage and just multiply by 100. Okay, so you can now see that the first component um, can just yeah, this PC1, this PC2, PC3, PC4, but you can actually add these names uh, as the X uh, values there. So you can see the first component, PC1, explained close to 100% of our data set, over 90% is explained. The second one explained maybe 5% of our data set. So it means if you take the first two components, of course, your data is almost completed, completely explained by the first two components. So I'm going to be stopping here on principal component analysis.
dimensionality, dimensionality reduction. So this is an aspect of feature selection. So you don't have to worry about going deep into it, but I recommend, I strongly recommend you actually read it up. So if you go to the tutorial page, um, and let's go back to today's class, which is feature selection. I would like you to spend some time. So this feature selection is with this one. I would like you to spend some time uh, to read up these items here. Follow the procedure as well, because uh, this is something you can do at your leisure time and it becomes clearer to you. All right, so we've completed the class for today and the next class, which will be available in two days time. Let me just check. So I'm going to go back here. Uh, it's going to be, I don't know. So uh, that class is not ready yet. I think it should be something about classification. I can't remember or regression, but for now we've completed class five. Uh, which is feature selection, ending up with principal component analysis, which is an aspect of dimensionality reduction. I'd like to thank you for viewing. I'd like to recommend to you subscribe to my channel if you've not subscribed. And also let me know if you have any challenges following. I'm going to make our time to help you. Remember, I'm kind on the Tech Pro and I'm always there for you.